Well, good morning, Encounter. Stand to your feet. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Y'all ready to worship? You can come down to this altar if you want to. We won't buy it. It's wide open. Come on, let's worship Jesus this morning. Here we go. Come on, let's declare this this morning. Before I call, before I ever cry, you answer me for when the thunder hides. Come on. I can't outrun this heart I'm tethered to. With every step, I collide with you. Come on, let's go. Like a tidal wave crashing over me. Rushing in to meet me here, your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape, tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce, yeah. I cannot fear the only thing I found, through it all, through it all. You never let me down. You don't hold back, relentless in pursuit. Every turn, every turn, I come face to face with you. Let's see it. Like a tidal wave, crashing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape, tearing through the atmosphere. Chase me down, you chase me down, come on, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? Come on, you chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? Chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me back? Come on, let's see it. Like a tidal wave crashing over me, rushing in to meet me. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. Tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce. Your love is fierce, yeah. Your love is fierce. Your love is fierce, yeah. Oh, come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. When the heart is 
Come on, y'all believe that this morning? How do you know every, every battle we face, we can have the victory? Amen? We can have that victory even when we don't see it right away. God is working. Amen? God is working.
we will stand in awe of the one who breaks the chain. Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. Come on, do you believe that this morning? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a minute. We're talking about the power of the name of Jesus. And I, I heard the Spirit say this so loudly that everyone in here has something that you're going through, you're struggling with, you need Jesus' hand on it because it's causing you stress and anxiety and worry and fear. And right now, we want to declare that no matter what that situation is, we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. That all we have to do to that situation is confess the name of Jesus over it. Amen. Confess. So whatever that is right now, we're going to sing this again, but whatever that is, give it to Jesus. Confess it over that situation and see what God does. Whatever you're worried about right now. I know there's something I'm going through right now that I'm worrying about. And I've got to remind myself that Jesus has already overcome. Amen? And Jesus does not want me walking in fear or doubt or unbelief. And Jesus will never, and this is for someone in here, Jesus will never lead you down the wrong path. Never. Come on, never will he lead you down the wrong path. That's what the enemy does. So let's sing this again, Berkeley. Let's just, whatever it is, come on, let's give it to him. Let's not walk out with it. Fix let's keep it here. Our eyes on the one who come on. Overcame. Come on, we're having church. Come on. Just give it to him, whatever it is. We will stand in awe of the one who breaks the chain. Come on, let's sing that again. We fix our eyes. Come on. We will fix our eyes on the one who overcame. Come on. We will stand in all of the one who breaks the chains. We will fix our eyes on the We 
will stand in awe of the one who breaks the chains. Love has a name. Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. Just worship here. Let's confess this. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light in the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Come on. Great. Sing that again. You give life. You give life. Come on, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great. Great. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you. Let's sing that again. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only. Yeah. Great are you, Lord. Let's confess this again. You give life. You give life. Come on. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. will cry. Come on. His bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Come on. Cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Let's confess that again. All the earth, all the earth 
will shout your praise. Come on. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we declare that great are you great are you Lord yeah. again come on great are you Lord you give life you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore, come on, let's confess it. Every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Come on, let's sing that again. Let's just remind ourselves of what Jesus can do. Remind him of who he is. Come on, let's confess it. Let's declare it. You give life. Come on, you are love. You bring light. Come on, he brings light to the darkness in your life. Come on. You give hope. You, he restores. Come on. Every heart that is broken. Come on. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. Great. I'm gonna do something. Keep that going, Daniel. Come on. I want to stretch y'all a little bit. Let's all lift our hands to Jesus. Come on. Lift our hands to Jesus. This isn't for me. This isn't for anyone around you. This is for you and Jesus. And I said this to the kiddos back there at VBS, and I said it last week too, that we don't just worship God with our voices. We worship God with our bodies because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and God, we are his vessels. And God loves it when we lift our hands and when we get on our knees and when we bow down to him because he is that good. He loves that. Let's declare this one more time. Just keep your hands lifted. Come on. You give life. You give life. You are love. Come on. I think he's worthy of us. Come on. He's so worthy, so good to lift our hands to him and just full surrender. You restore Every heart that is broken. Come on, let's declare. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. Come on, let's sing it. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Come on, encounter. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out. Let's sing that again. You only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You're so great. Come on. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Father, you're so good. We thank you for being in this moment right now, Father, as your presence is here. We confess, Father, that we will not praise anything but you. We will not put anything before you. We will not worship anything above you. 
Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Father, when we walk out these doors, we live a life that's honorable and pleasing to you. Father, I thank you for everyone in this room this morning. And I just declare over them that they're going to have a hunger for the word that they've never had before. Father, that their relationship with you is prospering and it's growing. It's not staying stagnant and the enemy has no control over them in their life. And devil, I rebuke you off of every person here. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. That they, when they get into a situation, Father, they make it you first. They seek you first before anything else. Out of acting, out of fear or anger, they seek you first. That they speak the name of Jesus over that situation. Father, right now, I pray for the giving this morning. Father, we trust you with our finances. We want to be blessed, but only blessed by you, not by what the world can give us. Father, it's your plan, not ours. And Father, I'm just praying for everyone in this room right now, when it comes to our finances, Father God, that we are obedient to you, and we're not living according to what we want, but what you want, and according to your will. Father, I thank you. You do want to give us the desires of your heart, but according to your will and your purpose. And Father, I just declare that revelation over every person here this morning. That this giving is blessed, Father. They're giving out of faith. For those who are watching right now on the stream, when you're giving, Father, that he look, you, Father he look, you look at the heart. And I thank you that it's blessed. It's sowed into good ground. And we're going to see a harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus some praise? You guys can be seated. You guys can be seated. Y'all ready to get into the word? Let's try it again. You guys ready to get in the word? All right, welcome up our senior pastor, Pastor Joe Dwyer. Encounter Church. Man, praise and worship was good this morning. I tell you what, we could just call it a day, but we're not going to. I've got this much notes to go through today, so we are. I hope you brought your lunches this morning. Well, real quickly, I want to thank everybody for being here at Encounter Church this morning. It is an honor and a blessing to be before you uh, this morning. If you are a guest here with us today, if you would do me the favor of simply filling out a Connect card in the seat back in front of you, you can simply turn those in to the Connect desk as you're leaving here in a couple hours, and we will take those. I will look at those, and it gives myself an opportunity to call you and to see if you have any questions about Encounter Church, anything you may have seen, may have heard, and just for us to get to know you. Also, I've got a note from the staff here at Encounter Church. If you've never filled out a Connect card, maybe you've made yourself a partner of Encounter Church but never filled one out, please do so. And if you have any information that has changed, also this is a great time for you to refill out a Connect card. You can turn those in, and it gives us an opportunity to update our computer files. And I promise you, I'm not going to be the one that's updating the computer files, but we do have really, really good people and patient people um, to do that. And I think the person that we have doing that is actually using a Dell so that I know that it's blessed and it's highly favored and all that stuff. Uh, no more, no more, I, any, no more I stuff at the church, right? No, I'm working on them. I'm working on them. Guys, I'm believing for something big this morning. And, and what I mean by, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm talking big. What I'm talking about is something that only God can do. I am believing that God is going to bring something to your recall that only God can bring. I'm, I'm believing that God is going to show you something maybe you've never seen before, some information, some revelation that you've never seen before that really impacts you, something that you can use, something you can take out of here today, something that you can take to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back here to encounter on something, something that fulfills you for the whole week. And I, I really believe that the message that God has given us today. There's something in here for each and every one of us. So I just believe right now that we have eyes to see the word. We have ears to hear the word and our, our hearts and our minds are ready to comprehend what God has for each and every one of us today. I want to let you know that God does have something for you today. It is not just 
a circumstance that you just woke up and came to church, that if you're willing to put forth the effort to get up on a Sunday morning, get dressed, come and worship and listen to his word, I guarantee you he has something good for you. You being here is good. You have done something good for yourself. You have done something good for your spouse. And you have done something really good for your family by simply being here and worshiping with us and receiving the word of God. So thank you for being here with us this morning. I want to talk to you for just a second. And you're going to hear me say uh, several times today um, what it means to be a doer of the word, right? Let me ask you, many of you, I look out and I see that you're professional people and your contract, your builders. How many of you, if you do something, you like to see the results from that, right? As people, we like to see the results of our work. It doesn't matter what area of life you're in, whether that's your, uh, I mean, I like to see the results of McCall cleaning the house. Amen. Amen. Those are some good results. I do it. I do it. All, I do it all, anyways. <laughs> but we like results. We we like results. Christians, as Christians, as believers, as part of the beloved, we like to see results also in our lives. There's all kinds of promises that are in the Bible, and we want to see those come forth in our own lives. Right. But one of the craziest things that I've seen, and I'm not trying to call anybody crazy in here, but in the world, we say, you know, hey, if nothing changes, nothing, nothing changes. If you're not a doer out in the real world, then you probably are not seeing the results that you desire to see. But somehow, along the lines through either religion or tradition or some of the things that some of the churches preaches, that there's this um, theology that just because we're a Christian— things are just going to magically appear for us. That just because we are a Christian and just because we are a believer, that these things are just going to automatically happen for us. And I'm here to say this for just a minute. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Is that it is this. Yes, as Christians, we do need to see results in our lives. But I want to say this. Results do not come in the Christian life just by showing up to church. And I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes this morning. I am just simply uh, sharing some things that I've heard over the last couple of weeks as I've been to meetings and gone to lunches and things like that. And I just want to say this to all of us corporately, that just coming to church does not guarantee results in your Christian life. And you know what? Sitting here just listening do not guarantee results in our Christian lives. Just because you're here this morning and you are taking notes does not mean that results are going to happen in your Christian life. The only way that is guaranteed that we're going to see the results that we want in our walk with God is that we have to be doers of the word. Doers of the word are the only ones that ever see results. So we have to ask ourselves today, Am I just going to be somebody that's an attendee? Or am I going to be somebody that's just listening? Or am I somebody that, you know, just taking notes is as far as I'm going to take it? Or am I going to get in neck deep and I'm going to be a doer of the word? And when you start being a doer of the word, start receiving the things that you've sown seed for. Start seeing those results. And I'm excited about where we're headed as a church and as a people and as a community and as a family. I want to go to church with a bunch of people that are doers of the word. I want to surround myself with doers. Amen? Amen. I want to see results in every single one of your lives. In every single area. In your finances, in your marriage, in your business, in your health. I want to see results. But I want you to hear this from my voice this morning, that those results don't come unless something changes and we start being a doer of the word. So that's what I'm going to open with, and that's kind of what I'm going to close with. So over the last couple of weeks, man, we have been talking about the truth, haven't we? And we know that the truth is the truth. The word of God is the truth. It's never changed. It always is and always will, will be. And that is something that we can really plant our foundation of our walk on is the truth of God. 
And one of the truths that we've been talking about is that God wants you well, that God doesn't want you to perish. And then we kind of started talking about healing and we got into Jeremiah and we started looking at the prophet uh, Jeremiah and he said this, he said, you know, save me, Lord, and I'll be saved and heal me and I'll be healed. So then that kind of God put it on us and we kind of took this road. We've been talking about healing over the last couple of weeks. And since we've been talking about healing, I've received a lot of questions. And there's two big questions that I've received over the last two weeks. And I want to take about five to six minutes and I just want to answer those questions. So I'm going to do that with all of us so we have a great understanding of this. And the question is is this. I've gotten this email several times. Pastor Joe, I understand the truth. I love the truth. My foundation is based on the truth. You've shown us some scriptures to where God doesn't hate me. He loves me and that he doesn't want bad. He doesn't want death for me, but I've been sick before. And am I out of faith and am I not living in the truth if I take medicine? So what I want to do for the next few minutes, I just want to simply show you a few scriptures that you can mark and that you can reference about what the Word says when it comes to taking medicine. Okay? So here we go. Does God want us to take medicine? 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 7. Talk about King Hezekiah. Then Isaiah said, take a lump of figs, so they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Same scripture said, heal me, God, and I'll be healed. Came from the same God, come from the same place of salvation, Yet the, and these guys knew this, and yet they used medicine, and he recovered. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6 From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but the wounds and bruises and petrifying sores, they have not been closed up or bound or soothed with anointment. Okay? More examples that medicine was used. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12. I'm not going to read all of this, but basically it said... There are leaves. You can use those leaves as medicine. I hope you see where I'm going with this. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22. We talked about this three weeks ago. Is there no balm? Is there no physician? He's going. We've got medicine, we've got doctors. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, drink only water, but use a little bit of wine for your stomach's sake. When infirmities. This is Paul, the apostle Paul, telling Timothy, use some medicine. I want you to understand this this morning, that I believe that, yes, that the God that is the God of loving kindness is still the healer God. And just because we use medicine does not mean that we don't believe that and that we are not in faith. What do I think about medicine? I think it's great. And I'm going to talk more about that in just a few minutes. But I will tell you this about any medication I take. Number one, I pray before I take any of it. I ask the Lord, is this something you want me to put in my body? This is not my body. This is your body. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Is this something you want going in to the temple? And the second thing I pray before I ever take medicine is, is I just ask God to sanctify that medication before it ever goes in, that that medication is cleansed by the washing of the word before it ever hits my body. And that the only effects of that medicine are the desired effects. But the key point of it here is this. Pray about it before you ever take it. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to discern to you, to show you, is this something that I need to be taking? 
Because I know for a fact that there are, myself included at times, and some of us out there, that we are taking medications that God really doesn't want us taking, and we haven't thought about it, we haven't prayed about it, and we're simply taking the word of somebody to say, hey, this may help. You get to choose. So that brings us to our next question. Well, what about doctors? Praise God for doctors. <laughs> Praise God for doctors. Are we in faith if we go see a doctor? Going to see a doctor has nothing to do with you not believing that God is still the healer God. The word talks about doctors all through the old and the new uh, the old testament and the new testament who knows the apostle luke does anybody know what his profession was he was a doctor i don't know who that's for this morning but he was a doctor how many of you liked the book of acts man i love the book of acts Man, the book of Acts is full of when God commissioned the Holy Spirit and the anointing fell and the anointing starts to do things for us. We see miracles, we see healings, we see all this thing in the book of Acts. And guess who wrote the book of Acts? A doctor. Pretty awesome, isn't it? A doctor. Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 says this. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. There's some revelation that comes from this scripture. Number one, and you'll hear me say this a couple times today, we live in a fallen world, and just because you are a believer and that you are righteous and that you are in the family of the beloved does not mean that you will not get sick. We lived in a cursed world. And number two, right here, we can prove that Jesus is not condemning doctors. God created you, and some of us may have a hard time believing this, myself included. God created you as an intelligent person. I knew it would get some laughs. Some of you were driving to church today, and you're like, God, that is not an intelligent person. And you gave him the holy wave. God's number one, right? Yeah, some of you did that. <laughs> you blessed somebody to come into church this morning, didn't you? Melinda. <laughs> Call you out on TV, Melinda Guerrero. <laughs> I've seen you drive. I probably blessed you the other day. <laughs> Somebody's going, what is going on in this church? If you're a guest here with us today, thank you for being here. <laughs> if you never come back, you're always welcome. But God created us as intelligent people, and he gave us the ability to create medicine. He gave us the ability to learn how to repair our bodies. Doctors are just one way that God brings healing to us. So the next time you see a doctor, put your arm around him and say, thank you. Thank you for what you do. I want to address this for just a second, and we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. There's some theology that's out there, and I touched on this a little bit last week, and it upset a few people. And I'm, I'm just going to say I'm not going to apologize for speaking the truth, but there's some theology that's out there. There's some, some things that we have been taught, uh, especially in the Christian church over the last couple hundred years, that says that it's God's will for you to be sick, that it's God's will for some of you to be sick. That, that God 
God gave you a cancer because he needed you to do something with it. That, that God, you know, broke your leg so that you could be a witness. And this is not mine. I learned this from Pastor Jay uh, when I first started coming to church here. If that is your belief, and I know that there's somebody in here, maybe that's your belief or somebody that's online. If that is your belief, why are you going to a doctor and taking medicine to fix it? If you believe that God put that on you, why don't you just go sit there and watch the Dallas Cowboys and see what happens? I mean, they're going to lose. It's going to be the first thing that's going to happen. <laughs> and that's going to put you in a bad mood. I, I'm being serious. I, I'm being serious. I'm trying to make light of it. But, but seriously, if you come from the theology, I, just wanna, I want you to ask yourself, if, if God wanted you to have that infirmity, did you go to the doctor and try to fix it? And my question to you is, why did you do that? Because somebody a long time ago prayed for somebody and they didn't make it and they said, you know what, it just not, might not have been God's will for them to be okay. John chapter 9 verse 1 says this, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but the works of God should be revealed to him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and he made clay with the saliva and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Now, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of deep stuff in the last five or six scriptures that we read. Number one, uh, Jesus is being a little bit rebellious here um, because on the Sabbath you didn't kneel or knit or make or mold clay, and here he is on the ground. He's doing those types of things. But he makes this clay, and he puts it on this guy's eyes, and he's healed. Now, we know that in this, this time period, in this dispensation of Jesus' ministry that he healed many people. Matter of fact, there's 23 or 24 accounts of miracles that have happened, thousands of accounts of, of people being healed after Jesus prayed for them and, or didn't pray for them, but laid hands on them and spoke the word over them. But Jesus very specifically needed this mud up and put it on this guy's eyes. What does that mean? What does that mean in the context of this Sunday. There's a few things that I got from this. I think God was showing us that he wants us to use our brains. Again, he's showing us that we're intelligent people with brains and to use it. I think the second thing that God has shown us through this scripture here is that God does not despise the physical world that we live in. And what I mean by that is, is that we were the last thing that was created. When we got to this world, there was already an atmosphere. There was already air. There was already water and trees and plants and animals for us to eat. He put that stuff on the earth. Genesis absolutely tells us that he gave us dominion over those things to use them the way that we needed them to be used. God wants us to use every means that we have to be healed. Let me ask you a question. Is it God's will for you to eat? Maybe not as much as some of us do. I did go back and I looked in Leviticus and I did not find little Debbies in the list of things that we should not eat. So I'm still good there. I did, I did research that on Friday. 
That tells me that little Debbie is anointed. <laughs> but if Jesus, if God created us to eat, that our body, he created our bodies to eat, it's his will for us to eat, then what do we have to do? You got to do something, right? What do you got to do? You got to do it, right? Man, the Holy Spirit is not shoving those cream pies down my throat. <laughs> what about this? Is it God's will for you to drink some water? Apparently it is because he created our bodies to drink water. So what did he do? He provided water. But is the Holy Spirit going to come and open your mouth and just pour in water? No, he gave us the brains. He made us intelligent people to look at the things that we have, to look at the means that we have, to do those things, to use those things so, so that we can live. And the same goes with medicine. But we've got to be doers. We've got to stop sitting back. Let's switch gears for just a second. Turn with me to John chapter 16, verse 33. I started with this. I'm going to say it in the middle, and you're going to hear me say it at the end. But just because you said yes to Jesus does not mean that you will not face trials and tribulations in this life. It does not mean that you are going to never hear of a bad report. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't that good? We live in a fallen world. There are going to be times to where, where we are not being lied, get, uh, led, guided, and directed by the Holy Spirit, and sometimes we're going to open up the wrong door. And there's going to be consequences for open up the wrong door. There's just times that sometimes we just we, we put ourselves, we open ourselves, we open our lives, we open a door to a cursed world. And there's some things that can come around us. There's some things that can happen. There's just going to be trials and tribulations that happen. We all know people that open themselves up to a cursed world all the time. We see all kinds of bad things that happen to them all the time. Is that God's will for us? No, it's not. But he said it's going to happen. He said it's going to happen. But do not fear because I've overcame. This whole series started a couple weeks ago when I came out and I said, I want you to know, everybody that is in this place today, that God wants you to have a long life and he wants you to have a life that's been well lived. And we kind of started talking about, okay, what does that look like? And we said, there's some things that we have to do and so I'm hoping and believing this morning that you're hearing me that the things that we're having to do, we, there's a part that we have to play in doing that. There's things that we have to do in the natural and there's things that we have to do in the spiritual. We're focusing more on those natural things today, but we'll end up talking about the spiritual. But we've got to know the truth. We've got to know that God calls himself Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. We've got to understand that God gave us doctors and that we're not out of faith if we go see one and that we have medicine, but yet there's still a few more things that we need to do because the word says that if we are a doer of the word, we're guaranteed to see results to live that life well lived.
Here's the last thing that I want to talk to you this morning about when it comes to doing. Turn with me to Psalms 112, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Let's stop right there. Blessed is the man who acknowledges God and is attentive to his word. That's what fears mean. And delights greatly in his commandments. In other words, he is a doer of what God's told him to do. Let me ask you a second, who, who, is this, who is this talking about here? Raise your right hand. He's talking to us. This is about us. These are the results that he's talking about. We're the ones that are blessed when we acknowledge the Lord and we are attentive to his word day and night, who delights and is a doer of his word. Verse 2, his descendants will be mighty on the earth, the generations of the upright will be blessed. Again, he is talking about us. Verse 3. Oh, this will make somebody mad. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. I'm not even going to go there. You can read it. But I'm believing that's for me. Verse 4. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of companion and righteous. Again, talking about us. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. And this is where it starts to get good. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. I want you to go back to uh, verse 6 with this. Here's what I want us as a church as a group of believers, as a group that has heard the word and a group that's going to be a doers of the word as soon as we leave this place in another hour. We're going to do what we know is right. Let's just take healing again for an example. If we get sick, we're going to use our brains, and we're going to pray about it. And we're going to go to the doctor. And then we're going to get some medicine. And then we're going to worship and thank God. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. But then we're going to go back to verse 6. And here's the next thing that we're going to do. We are going to stop being shaken. We are going to stop being moved. Because we have the truth, and the truth resides inside of us. We are not going to be shaken by what? Verse 7. Of evil tidings. You know what that means? You know what that translates bad to? We are not going to be moved. We are not going to be shaken by a bad report. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that trials and tribulations will not come. We're going to do what we know to do in the natural. We are going to do what we know to be in the spiritual, and we are not going to be shaken. We are not going to be moved, and we are not going to be afraid. Why are we not going to be afraid? I'm going to close with this. 
I'm going to close with 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. We looked at this last week. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us. Isn't that good? God's long-suffering towards us. Do you know what that means? God is patient with Joe Dwyer. Thank God that if there's one person that God wants to be patient with, it's me. Now, I'm getting better. Call can attest. There are some times that I have shown uh, my The proof is still in the drywall in our garage. I left those up as reminders. Serve a God that is a God of love and kindness and that he is patient towards us. Can I just say this? I'm going, to, I'm going to take a side rabbit trail right here. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm talking to myself when I say this, when it comes to patience. We serve a God that shows us patience each and every day. And, you know, I truly believe with all of my heart that as Christians, a lot of us truly don't understand the patience that God has because we're an impatient people. And I really believe because this is the way it worked in my life. I really was impatient with other people, including McCall and my children, because I believe that God wasn't patient with me. And our patience is reflected. I believe this all in my heart, that our patience is truly reflected on how we believe God is patient with us. And if we believe that God is not patient with us, we have patience with nobody else. So that, I don't know who that's for this morning. You got that one for free. But his long suffering towards us, not willing. Somebody needs to mark that in your Bible. Not willing that any should perish and all should come to repentance. So we've got to be doers. What does that mean? That means that when the bad report comes, we don't have a fit of cardinality. We don't go bury ourselves in a bunker. We don't listen to what this person's saying and what this person's saying is that we remain, our eyes remain on Jesus and we are focused on the truth because the truth never changes. You wanna see something neat? In the scriptures that we just read, it's proof that those tidings are going to come. But they don't stay. I want you to repeat after me. It came to pass. Amen. Would you stand to your feet with me? So we're going to be a doer of the word. We're going to do some things different on Monday. You know, and bad tidings come in all shapes and forms, sizes. Not everything has to be catastrophic. Not everything has to mean death. I want to share with you for just a second, because I believe somebody in here may be going through this this week. There's a tool that, that, that Satan uses against the brethren. And I really don't understand, I don't know how to under, really to communicate what this tool is or the theological name of this tool is, but I call it the tool of pileup. In other words, some of you may know that when it rains, it pours. I call it the tool of Pilate. How many of you have ever experienced Satan using the tool of Pilate on you? Because, man, you get a bad report on Monday morning, and then right before lunch you get another one, and then you, whatever. 
you back into a pole. I mean, it just goes on. How many of you just had those days to where, man, it just piled on, it piled on, it piled on, it piled on. And maybe that's you in here this morning. If you're experiencing that, I just want you to rebuke that and say, in the name of Jesus, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will not throw a fit of carnality and ruin my witness. I will not punch a hole in the garage drywall. Again. You know that one. We said a lot of things today. I didn't say God said a lot of things. God showed us a lot of things in here. I'm believing that you had ears to hear. You took some of it in, some of it went in and went out. It doesn't apply to you. But I'm just asking you as Cody begins to sing, I want you to begin to meditate. And I want you to begin to thank God for showing you the things that needed to be highlighted in your life. And right now, we have the opportunity to see the power of God work. We have the opportunity to see the anointing fall upon us. We have the opportunity to see the Holy Spirit go to work. And I just want you to begin to reflect on those things that God has highlighted in your life for just a few minutes. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna pray for those things. name there's power in his name yeah we have the victory oh, yes Jesus we have the victory Come on. there's power in his name there's power in his name We have the victory. We have the victory. Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Holy Ghost fire. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. There's power in His name. There's power in His name. We have the victory. We have the victory. Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Come on, let's confess this. Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so good. Burning in me. If you've never made Jesus, Lord of your life. Would you do that today as a favor of me if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life? Would you just examine yourself for a second and just ask yourself, can I do this on my own or do I need a savior? And if that's you this morning, 
would you just step out and come to the front? So that we can just celebrate together as we see the greatest miracle that the church will ever see. So as this altar is open for those that are ready to make the greatest decision that they've ever made in their life, to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If there's anybody in this place that's facing bad tidings, you've received a bad report. I want to let you know that the Holy Spirit is in this place and the Holy Spirit has been specifically commissioned to activate when the truth has been told, when the word has been preached. And that's what we've done here this morning at Encounter Church. We didn't rip any pages out. We preached the word of God. The word is out. And now the Holy Spirit's ready to activate on that. So if you have ever, you never made Jesus Lord of your life, or maybe you're just facing a bad report, I want you to come down here so that we can pray for you. And we're going to pray over you. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to say, we're just going to get in agreement with what God's word said. And God's word said that we will not be shaken and we will not be moved. And we will not be afraid because we know the truth and the truth has always been, it is, and it will never change. If that's you this morning, would you come down here as church begins to start? power in his name there's power in his name we have the victory we have the victory oh yes Jesus there's power in his name there's power in his name We have the victory. We have the victory. Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Holy Ghost fire. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. There's power in His name. There's power in His name. We have the victory, yeah, yeah. We have the victory. In our God and through his own failing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken For we trust in our God, and through 
his own failing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken oh yeah for in the hour for in the hour of our darkest day we will not tremble we won't be afraid hope is rising like the light of dawn our god is for us he has overcome oh we trust in our god and unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken for we trust in our God and through his own failing we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Oh, come on, let's confess this. All those against him will fall, for our God is stronger. He can do all things. No higher name we can call For Jesus is greater We can do all things All those against him will fall For our God is stronger He can do all things No higher name we can call for Jesus is greater, we can do all things. All right, let's declare this before we end the service. For we trust in our God, and through his own failing love, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Praise God. I want you to repeat after me. I, I won't be shaken. shaken. Now give God a round of applause this morning. Man, I tell you what, what a great day to be at Encounter Church. Man, we have seen people that have received Jesus as Lord of your life. We just saw a miracle happen right here at Encounter Church. Praise God. That means baptisms are coming. Hey, the, hey, it's still going here, but I want to start to close this down for us. And I just want you to hear me right now. Men, I'm talking to you, man. And I'm not going to go into the definition of a man or a woman, but if you're a man, you know you're a man. If you were born a man, Lord Almighty. Okay. I want you to make a commitment to be here at church this Saturday morning, and we're going to feed you breakfast, and we're going to give you a word. So if you're a guy in this place, I want you to repeat after me. I will eat breakfast with you. All right. Awesome. We're good to go. We're good to go. So guys, put it on your calendar. Really make a make a. Uh, uh, a chance to be here. So, hey, Cody's going to sit here and he's going to continue to play. The invitation that we said a while ago, whether that's for you to make Jesus Lord of your life or you have a bad report you need you want prayer for, or maybe you didn't feel comfortable coming down or now's the time, that's going to keep going. You can come down. We'll be here for the rest of you. We love you and we'll see you right back here at 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For we trust